stream uh, tabletop games live every um, Friday night from 6 to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So make sure to check that out. We play all sorts of crazy stuff. I'm just going to be playing a solo game um, right now. But uh, we play all kinds of crazy stuff. You can check out like our VODs and our highlights and things like that to see like some of the other crazy games that we've played. Um, but yeah, make sure to uh, follow us and uh, check out our Twitter too. It's uh, Epic Gaming Night or at Epic Gaming Night. So let's check this out here. The Long Dark. This is a Journey in the Black Pit. Your party, ah, your party is scouting the mines of Moria, searching for signs of orcs, dark tunnels, and twisting passages spread out in all directions. The labyrinth maze that you could wander forever if you take the wrong path. Set up. The first player attaches Cave Torch to a hero of his choice. So the Cave Torch here. Upside down. Whoa! Cave Torch here. Have to pick one of these guys. The Cave Torch is attached to a hero. Restricted um, action. I can exhaust this to put uh, three progress tokens on a dark location. So that's kind of cool. But uh, after I exhaust it, I have to reveal the top card of the encounter deck, which is this, which is the bad deck with the evil Eye of Sauron on it here. Um, and if there's an enemy in there, so basically any like creature, um, like probably with this one, it'll be lots of orcs and things like that, saying that we're uh, going to the Mines of Moria, searching for signs of orcs. So maybe we won't find any. Maybe there's just going to be no orcs, which would be awesome. Yeah, right. Then Aragorn wouldn't be able to use his, all his awesome weapons. Um, but yeah, after I exhaust it, if I find any um, orcs or any creatures in there, I have to actually add them to the little line here. So, yeah. Who am I going to put this cave torch on? I think I might put on Theodred. Mostly because he just chills for the most part. He's going to be like my questing guy because he helps give uh, Aragorn resources. So we're going to put that on him. I'm playing with Aragorn, Theodrid, and Gloin. And this is just a straight up leadership deck that I built. It's like monocolor leadership. I don't know if that's actually a thing in this game, but uh, that's what I'm playing with. I'm a, I wouldn't say that I'm a noob at this game, but I would say that I'm not like hardcore, super experienced. I just like to, I'm a filthy casual. So I don't have all the expansions. I think this might be like the newest one that I have and it's, uh, a, it's pretty old at this point. So that's kind of cool. So yeah, I have to draw my starting hand of six cards and I get one resource for each character. Guys, if you have any questions about like board games or any questions about the game, feel free to ask them in chat too. Um, I'll be happy to answer it because I'm pretty much just here just hanging out. Trying to see if anybody's willing to watch some tabletop games. One, two, three, four, five, six cards in my hand. So we got... Basically we're looking for some really good like attachments. These are kind of good. This one gives us plus one defense. This one gives us plus one attack. Sneak attack's okay. I don't know. I always want to get Steward of Gondor out because it just helps Aragorn ramp so much. So should I mulligan this for Steward of Gondor? It's not bad. It's not bad. That's not amazing either. I think we're going to mulligan this and try to go for Steward of Gondor. So in this game, you're allowed to mulligan once, which basically means you can put your starting hand back and draw one more time, but then you're stuck with the starting hand you get at that point. So let's see how that goes. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, hey, Steward of Gondor, that's what I was looking for. Bam. Da, 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 da. So basically this card's so crucial because it basically I can put on Aragorn and exhaust it to um, get more resources. So it's basically like resource ramping really quick. Last game I played of this, I got Steward of Gondor in my first hand and I put on Aragorn and like the first card off the encounter deck made me uh, discard all of the uh, attachments on all my characters. So it's pretty terrible. Um, but yeah. 
I'm trying to make sure I'm keeping up with chat. Um, doo -doo -doo. let me pop this out. Pop out. Nice. Good times. So how you how's you guys day been going so far? Hopefully pretty good. Alright, anyone played this game before? Let's see here. So this is my first turn. So I have my six cards. You actually the first thing you do is you draw. So I get to draw up to seven. And I need my starting threat dial here. Almost forgot that. Um so I have twenty-nine as my threat which is not good. In this game, it's a solo game, um, but it's also cooperative. And the ways to lose the game are basically if my all my heroes die, I can lose the game. Also, if my threat dial here gets all the way up to 50, I lose. So I'm starting with 29, which is pretty high. So uh, let's hope we don't get too much higher. Okay, doke. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Looks pretty good. That gives extra attack. That's pretty awesome. I've got the little Gondor warrior here. Um. Yeah. So let's read the other side of this. So the long dark. When revealed, discard X cards from the top of the encounter deck until you ah until you discard X locations where X is the number of players minus one to a minimal of one. Um, add those locations to the staging area um, and put the rest of the cards back. So basically I just have to re discard the top cards until I get a location and then that goes into play. So that's not a location. That is a location. The Abandoned Mine. So I guess we're starting with the Abandoned Mine here in play. Goodness gracious, I don't think that's a very good one to start with. It looks terrible. So this card also increases the threat um, and if we quest unsuccessfully, it triggers all the loss conditions. This is the abandoned mine. It's an underground dark location. So the good thing is I can exhaust the cave torch to basically get rid of that. Um, exhaust the cave torch to place up to three progress tokens on a dark location. So I could do that, but then if the top card is a creature, it would come into play instead of that. Which, I'm not sure which is better or worse. But this... Location also has 13 progress tokens that I have to put on there, so I kind of want to actually be like working on the main quest as well. So the ways to lose the game are my guys dying and my threat getting up to 50, which would be terrible. The ways to win the game are basically to go through the different location cards here. So I'm trying to get progress on these and then complete the final mission that's on the last location card. Okay. Let's see. So it is my turn. So first I get to play cards. So I'm going to spend, I have to spend my resources here that I have on my characters. Each character generates one resource at the beginning of each turn. So I have one each here. So I'm going to spend two um, leadership resources to play Steward of Gondor here on Aragorn. And then as an action, I can exhaust St Steward of Gondor to add two resources to the attached tier's resource pool. So I'll go ahead and do that and put two resources in Aragorn's resource pool. So next turn, it'll actually be positive growth as long as that stays around long enough. So I still have three resources. I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to play down this, uh, this Guard of the Citadel. He costs two, so we'll spend these two off Aragorn, and then I'm also going to play Duladan Mark, which will give a Gloin plus one strength. So the Garden Citadel is an ally, so he's going to be uh, a guy that can help me quest and help me fight off bad guys, and then this Duladan Mark is going to give Gloin one extra attack, which will be awesome, because uh, being able to fight off the people would be awesome. Okay, so 
All right, so now I have to choose who I'm going to quest with. And I also can try to use my cave torch here. I might want to try to do that first. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use my cave torch. I'm going to exhaust it and put three progress tokens on the abandoned mine, which completes the abandoned mine and uh, sends that to the discard pile, which is awesome. But because I use my cave torch, I have to uh, discard the top card of the encounter deck. If that card is an enemy, add it to the staging area. So at least this way, I'll know if there's actually going to be an enemy out there before I do my questing. So it is not an enemy, so that just straight up goes to the discard pile. It was a burning low. So... Alright, um, ba -ba -ba -ba. All right. those cards don't matter because I have no resources. So now I have to choose who I'm going to quest with. So each character has a different rating, so I have questing, uh, attacking, and defense. So you can add your questing together to see how much um, you're trying to get over the amount of threat that's in the pool out here. Currently there's no threat because I got rid of the location but there could be more threat, like bad guys could come out, or more locations, and things like that, that would go against my questing. And you want to have a positive value, because you subtract the threat from your questing value, and that determines how many progress tokens you put on here. So I'm going to... Um, I'm going to exhaust Aragorn and Theodrid. So when Theodrid exhausts to go to the quest, he can put a resource token on another character um, who is in the quest. So he is going to put one on Aragorn. And then in response, when he commits to the quest, I can spend a resource token from him to ready him. Um, since there's nothing out here, this might be a mistake, but since there's nothing out here right now, I'm going to not do that. I'm going to just leave him exhausted so I can have that extra resource. Um, and then Gloin is not going to commit to the quest. And the Guard of the Citadel, we have one, two, three currently. Um, the Guard of the Citadel is going to go to the quest too. So I technically have four um, added to the quest. So I use this little, um, basically this is a magic life counter. I use it to uh, track how much I'm questing for. So I'm questing for four. So since I'm just one player, I have to draw from the encounter deck and put that into play and basically trigger whatever it is. So we're going to go ahead and draw that. Another abandoned mine. Great. Um, yes, yeah, so this just has a lost ability. The wealth of Moria was not in gold or jewels. The, to the toys of the dwarves nor in iron their servant. Okay, good for that. Um, so this is a four, and I'm a four. If the player's quest unsuccessfully, trigger all lost effects in play. So questing unsuccessfully, is that any time I don't actually put a thing on there? Oh my gosh, I hate to try to look at the rules. This is going to be so boring for everyone. Da -da 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 -da. Questing successfully or unsuccessfully? I don't know if even ties are successful or unsuccessful. Questing, questing. Quest resolution. So, literally... Successfully is if I go over the needed amount. Unsuccessfully is if the threat is higher. So if it's even, if the player's quest unsuccessfully. The player's quest unsuccessfully. If the combined score is equal to the combined there, then no progress tokens are placed and the players do not increase their threat dials. Okay, so I didn't do successfully, I didn't do unsuccessfully. And unsuccessfully is what triggers the loss condition on here, so that's good. I didn't actually do it unsuccessfully, so I don't trigger the loss condition on there, which would return two goblin en enemies to the discard pile, which would be terrible.
Um, what? My friend's texting me about the Twitches. Anyway, um, I don't know. Can anybody see this? I'm hoping that's working properly. I've got uh, one guy in here. Piffle Stick, what's up, man? Um, I think my friend was trying to join, and maybe his internet's not letting him join. But anyway, um, so not successful or unsuccessful. So I don't add any here. And I don't take any bad stuff. And these guys kind of just wasted their turn. So basically, okay, cool. He's just talking about Twitch. Um, anyway, so it's the end of the turn since there's no bad guys. Normally you have this whole combat resolution phase. Don't have to worry about that because there's no actual enemies out here. So basically all my guys unexhaust, including their attachments. And then my threat goes up by one. So my threat's all the way up to 30. Gross. But uh, I chose to start this way. Let me start a new turn. So start a new turn, I get to draw a card. I also get to get one resource on each of my heroes. And then we're back to uh, playing cards again. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to exhaust Steward of Gondor to give myself two more resources on Aragorn. Aragorn's so resourceful. You're the best, man. Um, man, that card is not really good right now. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. I'm trying to figure out, do I want to play Keen I Took? Do I want to play Longbeard Orc Slayer? I mean, he's good for combat, but he also says when he comes into play, he deals one damage to each Orc enemy in play. And there's not currently any Orc enemies, so he's kind of like, he has like a Battle Cry effect, sort of, if you're used to Hearthstone. Or he has a Win Enters Play effect in Magic. He's really good when I play him down if there's Orcs already out here. But I don't really want to play him down since there's no Orcs. Um, that's not good. That's mediocre right now. That's blah. Um, I guess I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play Keen Eyed Took. Um, response after he enters play, reveal the top play card of each player's deck. Um, and for an action, I can return him to my hand. So I get to reveal the top card of my deck, which is gonna be this cool archer guy, which would be cool to have. He's good at questing. But I don't have him now. I just revealed that. And I can return him to my hand to discard the top card of each player's deck. So if I really didn't want that, I could bring him back to my hand. I might just play this guy down just to do it. These other cards are not really going to help me, so I don't really need to save the resources. So I'm going to go ahead and Wait, what I could do is I could trigger the Cave Torch, and that could bring a bad guy into play. So I'm going to trigger the Cave Torch, which lets me put three progress tokens, bam, 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 on the abandoned mine, and that'll clear it out. Ugh. Get out of here, abandoned mine. Um, but it also makes me reveal the top card of this, and if it's a bad guy, it actually comes into play. So it actually is a goblin warlord. That guy is terrifying. So he is also four threat. Three attack, three defense. But he is an orc. So I'm kind of glad I did that. So this guy is now in play. Blah! Gross. So now I'm going to play this guy for one, two, three, four resources. And he puts, he uh, damages each orc enemy in play. So he's going to damage this guy. So uh, this guy has five health. So the way the bad guys work is they have their threat, which adds to against my questing. And then uh, he has three attack and three um, uh, defense here. So we'll get to more about the attack and defense once we get to combat. Solo adventure time, yes. So I was watching a thing about how to make your Twitch stream better, and they said, stream more. 
So I'm just testing out playing solo because uh, we normally play with the entire group on Fridays. So um, if you want to see lots of loud, crazy people and crazy games, come back on Friday and check us out then. Um, but I'm just hanging out here to see if anybody wants to chat it up and wants to watch me play a game. So uh, thanks for stopping by, man. Yeah, so let's see what I want to do now. I have no resources, so I need to figure out who I'm committing to the quest. Yeah, man, I just wish more people would uh, stream board games or just play tabletop simulator or whatever. I'm just excited about uh, growing the tabletop hobby. So uh, the more the merrier. So uh, yeah, good times. Um, who are we questing with? Well, we're definitely questing with these guys. I'm going to have to get up to... To kill this guy, I need four over Z prints, so four, five, six, seven. I need seven attack to kill that guy. That is terrifying. Somebody's going to have to take the hit. Um, yeah, let's see. We're going to do this. We need lots of questing power to be able to get over this. Which I might should have saved some stuff for that, but it'll be okay. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. Goodness gracious. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, so we're going to be at five questing, which is, I can't really do more than that. But we're also going to unexhaust Aragorn. So when I commit him to the quest, I can give someone a resource. And then with Aragorn, I can spend a resource from him to unexhaust him when he commits to the quest. So that way Aragorn can try to help fight off this goblin warlord. So currently I have enough attack to be able to do it with these guys unexhausted. But the terrible thing is my threat is not really good right now. Uh, and his, his lost effect goes off. That's pretty gross too. He makes me discard an ally. Which will be keen I took. You will be dying. Okay. Um, so I have five to the quest, so I have to reveal an encounter card. So let's see here. Cool. Um, so let's reveal our encounter card. Hey, Dor Durin's Greaves. The first player attaches Durin's Greaves to a hero of his choice as an attachment. That's pretty cool. So it's plus two defense. Um, I'm probably going to be doing something pretty crazy here and not defending, which is very risky. But who do I want to put this plus two defense on? It'd be cool if it gave a bonus if I put on a dwarf, but I might put it on Gloin anyway. Or plus one defense. So we're going to put it on Gloin so he can be our little guy who doesn't commit to quests, who defends and attacks and all that sorts of, sort of stuff. Actually, yeah, it has attack on him. Yeah, we're still going to do it. Gloin, have some boots, sir. You're probably related to Durin somehow, so you should take your cousin, grandpa, uncle's boots, whoever he is. You should take his boots, man. Um, and then, uh, so this is four here, four threat, and then my, um, questing was five, so I get to put one press token on the quest here, so I need 13 altogether, so one is not really getting me there very quickly, but, uh, at least we're not in the negative. And then we will go ahead and go with um, taking this guy to attack us. So you can choose. So normally these guys will attack you automatically if your threat is uh, equal to or higher than the threat here. This guy's threat is 39 and I'm at 30 um, threat on my threat dial here. So he won't automatically attack me but with that that four threat that he adds to the pool here, um, he's really scary to leave in the middle, so I basically have to take care of this guy. 
So um, he's going to come over. I'm going to choose to assign him to myself to fight, and then he's going to be trying to fight me. So he gets a shadow card, which is a, a trigger that can happen whenever um, one of these guys um, is attacking you. So it's like a random thing, so you don't 100% know what's going to happen. And then I'm going to attack with my, or I can choose to defend now. So he's got three attack. I can defend with one of my characters, but I'm actually going to let the the attack go through undefended, which is terrifying. But uh, yeah, so when the attack goes through undefended, you just have to commit the damage that you would take onto one of your heroes. So my plan is to take the three damage on Gloin, which will give me three resources, because each time he takes damage, um, I get the resources. The problem with that is if this boosts his attack at all, like if it boosts his attack by like two, if it boosts his attack by two, I'm basically going to lose a hero. But I like to play this risk at the beginning of the game to try to get some extra resources. Um, so the attack's going through undefended, and no shadow effect. So the shadow effect is... There's like these little axes on some of the cards. So if you reveal a card for the shadow card, which was that card that I had here, um, it doesn't have an actual shadow effect, so nothing actually triggers. It just gets discarded. So we're going to leave that guy there. And he deals three attack that I have to assign to one of my characters, my actual heroes. So I'm going to assign three attack to Glowin. One, two, three, which in turn gives him three resources, which is awesome. One, two, three. Three. So now I actually have a chance where I can play some of these cards, which none of them really matter. Which is fine. Um, so now I'm going to attack this guy back. So he has a defense of three. So basically for each attack I have over the amount of defense, he takes that many wounds. So I'm going to do Aragorn is three, and then Gloin with the uh, Durin's Mark is um, three as well. So that's six altogether. So six, seven, eight. So 8 minus 3 is going to be um, killing him dead. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 damage. And he already had 1 damage on him, which didn't really matter, but he's overkilled. So he just goes to the discard pile. So I killed that guy off. Hooray! Maybe we can make some progress on the quest to meet eventually. So that's the end of the round. So now I get to unexhaust my things again. Talk about push your luck. Yeah, I don't know why. I always play this this deck where I do that and hope that uh, I don't kill off one of my heroes. But I really like to be like I really like to get Gloin injured so I can get those extra resources and it pays off later in the game. Normally I take that risk and then I get screwed. Um, it just depends on the scenario you're playing, because the, like, I think the shadow effect for this one, like, most of them just trigger, like, these lost, you can't see that at all, but they mostly just trigger these lost effects. I don't think you can see that either. But they, they trigger all sorts of weird stuff, so I don't think there's a whole lot that, like, boosts the bad guys, so it's probably safer than you think it is. Um, uh, but definitely depends on the scenario you're playing. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a good payout. So, I unexhaust all my guys. Hooray! And Gloin is still one life away from dying, though, so that kind of sucks. Yep, yep. But yeah, this deck is a lot about, like, generating resources and stuff. I'm definitely not a pro player at this game. I'm definitely a filthy casual, so, uh... I play, I have all my decks like mono colors, and I've tinkered around with making crazy like decks where you have all the different colors working together and all sorts of stuff, but I like to play it just like with my friends normally for fun. So, and we normally get smashed because when you're playing four player games and you're putting four cards out, it makes it really tough. Um, so yeah, and I have to add my thread up by one, so 31. Blah. Okay, okay, and we're at the beginning of the turn, so I get to draw a card. And I get one resource on each character. Bam. Bam. 
Bam. And now I get to play cards. I'm at the point where I have more resources than I have stuff to spend it on, which is kind of weird. Um, so we're going to exhaust Sword of Gondor to give Aragorn two resources. We're going to play down Silver Load Archer. He costs three. Um, we're going to split this up. We're going to go one, two, three resources spent. And he has the ranged ability, which does nothing in single player. That's great. Um, but he's good for attacking and he's good for questing. So that's, uh, that's good. Ranged allows you to attack enemies that are in front of another player. But uh, that's not going to happen this game. Um, and... Yeah, I'm not doing too bad off. I just need to quest like crazy now. So we're just going to do that. We're going to quest like crazy. So that's three questing off those guys. Then one more off that. So that's four, five, six. Six questing, and we're going to leave the groin unexhausted here. So that way I can have him if any monsters jump out. I don't even need to use my cave torch right now. Because there's none in play. Hopefully we can get ahead, ahead right here and actually like make some progress on this quest. Ready, set, go. The mountain roots. X. X is the number of players in the game. I'm, I'm pretty okay with that. So the threat on this is one, because there's only one player in the game. Um, but this card right here makes it plus one. So that's technically going to be a two there. Um, so I need two to beat that. So I have six, so I get to put four progress tokens on here. One, two, three, four. Still a far way away from 13, but, you know... Every little bit helps. Okay. Um, and then I can choose to travel to this location. Which, do nothing specifically happens when I travel there. But it gets it out of the middle. I have some guys unexhausted. Question is, do I want to use the cave torch to just straight up get rid of that card? What do we think, guys? Um, we're past the questing phase, so at this point I could use the Cave Torch as an action to just go ahead and get rid of it. I'm going to travel there in case I decide not to do that. So we're now, when you travel to a location, you put your quest markers on this instead of on this, and I basically need two to be able to, actually I only need one to be able to beat that. It basically would just waste a turn for me, which is kind of mediocre. I'm trying to actually get this thing done. The question is, do I use my cave torch right now and risk a bad guy just popping out? I probably should have unexhausted Aragorn with his ability because I have a lot of resources. But, you know, you can never have too many resources until a resource card, until an event card comes out and makes you discard all your resources, which there are in the game sometimes. I don't know if they're in this scenario. They're definitely in the last one I had. Let's do it. Let's do it. So we're going to Cave Torch to put three progress tokens on this, which it only needs one to be discarded. So this gets discarded. And then uh, we have to check this card. If it is an enemy, it comes into play. It is an enemy. It's a snake. Snakes! Why'd it have to be snakes? So rock, it's a rock adder. Rock adder cannot be attacked unless it has at least one damage this round. At least it has at least one damage this round. Unless it has dealt at least one damage this round. So it has to deal damage to be able to attack it back. 
and it will choose to engage me. So it is in front of me. So it is definitely attacking me. So it's going to get a shadow card. So question, where do I defend? I have an opportunity to unexhaust one of my guys here. These guys are going to die. This shouldn't be too hard. So what we're going to do, I'll show you how defense works here. So I can choose a guy to defend. So this guy is dealing three attack. Um, the Longbeard Orc Slayer has one defense. So if this doesn't buff its attack, he will survive. But he will take two damage, which will allow me to attack him back and kill him with Gloin. So um, Longbeard Orc Slayer is going to take the defense against this guy. So now we reveal the shadow card. Only one character is allowed to defend as well, so that makes it a little bit harder. Uh, it does have a shadow effect. The sh shadow. The defending player must exhaust one character he controls if able. I'm pretty sure I'm not allowed to just use actions in response to a uh, shadow effect. I think the shadow effects just trigger immediately. So I think that's going to exhaust Gloin because that's the only character I have. Which is mediocre because that means this guy gets to chill out in front of me and attack me again. But uh, he deals his two damage to my guy here, which doesn't kill him, but still sucks. Um, and then Gloin gets exhausted which Gloin would have easily been able to take out that stupid snake, but now he doesn't have the chance. Yeah, it's pretty lame. Um, but I am right about that, right? You can't like play an action card, because I have one that lets me unexhaust an ally. I would just be like, hey, I unexhaust this ally, and then exhaust him again, so that way Gloin could kill him. I don't think I can do that. Um, so yeah. I'll just have to plan on killing that guy off next turn. But I won't be able to attack him unless somebody takes damage, so I'm basically going to have to chump block with somebody, so one of my allies is basically going to die. Great! Alright. So that's the end of the turn. So yeah, these guys just stay in play in front of me if I don't actually kill them off, and they continue to attack me turn after turn. Thanks, stupid cave torch, you brought on the snake. Okay. Um, do to do, do. So I unexhausted everybody. Uh, my threat goes up by one, 32. And I get to draw a card at the beginning of the turn. Faramir is the best card ever. Um, I get one resource on each of my characters. One, two, three, and I get to play cards. <sighs> Need to play smarter, not harder. So here we go. We're going to play down Faramir. I guess you guys are, I'm running out of space to be able to even see these guys. Hey, get out the way, Mr. Snake. You're clogging up the whole board. We'll put you like that. There you go, Thadra. There's your stuff. And Faramir! He cost four. One, two, three, four. And then I guess we'll go ahead and exhaust Steward of Gondor to give Aragorn two things, and I really have nothing to spend it on, which is really depressing. Okay, and then we are going to go ahead and do some questing. So we're going to quest hardcore. I think I'm going to try to defend this guy with Aragorn. So Aragorn will take one damage and uh, kill him off with someone else. But I can quest pretty hardcore here. 
So I'm going to quest with these guys. That's three. Nice. I'm glad I was right about the snake shadow. The shadow effect that triggered off the snake being very jerky. Snake! Um, we're going to quest with Aragorn. We're going to quest with Theodred. Which is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, all together, same as last turn. We're also going to give a resource. Theodred's going to give a resource to himself, just because Aragorn has too many. Aragorn's going to spend a resource to unexhaust. Um, and Faramir is not going to commit to the quest yet, because if he commits, he'll add one, two, three, four, five with his action ability. And I can do that after I see how much I actually need. And he probably will end up doing it anyway, as long as there's not too many mean uh, beasties out there that I have to fight off. Alright, let's draw the card. Alright, this is the Ziegel Mind Shift. Action. Raise each player's threat by one to place one progress token on the Mind Shift. Mind Shaft. And it is a dark location, so I could... That is five threat. That's It's technically six threat that's out there in the middle right now. The thing about this, the cave torch in these scenarios is like it's just so tempting to use every turn, but then you're just fighting a ton of bad guys. I mean, I have some stuff. Technically I'm at 6, so I'm breaking even. I can exhaust Faramir to go over that. Man, if I could just clear that out. If I could just clear that out by taking 2 threat and triggering the Cave Torch, I could get so many progress tokens right here. Man, let's do it. I'm just going to high risk, high reward all the time. I guess that's how I play this game. So we're going to go, um, I'm going to trigger this action. I can just take it whenever. So I'm going to raise my threat by one to place a progress token on there. So, and it needs five to be cleared. And then I'll do the action again. So I'll raise my threat by one again. So I'm up to 34. So another progress token. And then I'll use my cave torch to place three more. One, two, three. And it is gone. It is discarded because I got five now. That's good. Um, but since I used the cave torch, I have to reveal the top card. If it's a bad guy, I have to put it in play. And it is not a bad guy. It's a treachery. So we'll just go ahead and discard that. Oh my goodness. We're going to murder everything. All right, so in that case... I'm going to exhaust Faramir to add one um, questing to each character that is currently committed to the quest. So it's going to add one, two, three, four, five questing. So that makes me have 11 questing. And we're going to put 11 tokens on the uh, Black Pit card here, which will complete it. Because Faramir is amazing. That's what we learned. So I think this triggers immediately since I completed it. So let's read the next card here. All right. Time carries no weight in the darkness, and hours creep by, no end in sight. The number of orcs in the mines increase as you head towards the east gate. But there appears to be little real organization within their ranks. You press onward. Okay. Let's, let's see what happens when we press onward. Continuing eastward. Um, when revealed, the first player makes a locate test. If this test is failed, reveal cards from the encounter deck equal to the number of players in the game and add them to the staging area. Then trigger all lost effects in play. There are no lost effects in play. Um, if the player quests successfully, if the player quests unsuccessfully trigger all lost effects in play, if the players defeat this stage, they have won the game. So this whole quest just seems like it's just a bunch of questing. 
I feel like if I went with, uh, was it Spirit, which is blue, like I could just beast this real hard. Uh, but we're, we're doing okay with questing here. Alright, so um, basically I have to do a locate test, which a locate test is where I, I may discard a card from my hand to look at the top card of the deck and uh, I can look at the top card of the deck and if it has a pass effect on it so some of these say pass and stuff like that wow there's not that many okay so this abandoned mine has a pass on the corner here I don't know if you can actually see it but uh, if the top card of the deck says pass then I get to uh, not put anything into play, which is probably not going to be the case. Um, da, 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 da. You reveal, discard a top card, ah. choose to discard one card from hand, discard the top card of the encounter deck, da, 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 da. and that's it. That's it. So let's see here. I do have a card I can discard though, so I think I will discard the uh, second breakfast. Um, so I'll discard that to try to see if I don't put um, I don't put the the top card in play. So we'll see if this is a pass. It is not a pass. So I don't think I'm going to continue to do that because it's just kind of silly. The first player makes a locate test. If the test is failed, reveal a card from the encounter deck equal to the number of players. So it just means I'm going to have another card in play. Wait, I was supposed to fight this guy off. Oh, wait, we haven't got to that phase yet. Great. So we haven't even got to combat yet, so whatever comes out could attack me, which is kind of scary. Um, but I'm not going to discard all the cards in my hand to try to luckily get a pass. So I'm going to just do that. It's going to go into play. Great! A Goblin Follower. We reveal Goblin Follower engages the last player. Well, I guess it still engages me because I'm the only player. So now I have two dudes who are coming to attack me. I'm definitely going to have to unexhaust some people. Oh my goodness! Too much stuff to keep track of. That guy looks like he sucks. Okay, um, we got a goblin and a snake coming after me now. Question is, do I want to unexhaust a guy to chump block? See, this guy's shadow effect gives someone plus one um, attack, so that could be really terrible if he would have come off the deck when I did the crazy thing with Gloin. Um, I kind of want to unexhaust someone to be a chump blocker. Uh, he doesn't have to chump block. I could block with Faramir because he would survive. The question is, how am I going to kill these guys off? I'm not really going to do it, am I? This guy has to be hit with six. This guy only has to be hit with three. We're just going to have to take one of them out. So I'm going to spend one resource. And I'm going to unexhaust Faramir. And now I need to choose blockers. I wish I had a better strategy for this, but I don't really have it. So let's see. Let's go with uh, Faramir. It's going to block the snake. And Aragorn is going to... Wait, the snake... Yes, the snake will do one damage to him. Aragorn's going to block the goblin. The goblin will do one damage to Aragorn. 
Should have put the greens on Aragorn. I done goofed. Done goofed. So we gotta deal shadow cards to both these guys. So snake gets a shadow card, this guy gets a shadow card. So snake here, goblin there. So snake shadow is nothing. So he deals one damage to Faramir, which allows him to be attacked, which is important. Um, then uh, no shadow effect on this either. So he deals one damage to Aragorn. Everybody's hurting! Oh no! And I'm running out of cards. I wish I had some card draw on this deck. Um, so now I can attack back. <sighs> I don't really have a good play for this. I wish I had more unexhausted guys. We're just going to have to leave the goblin up right now. Because I don't have enough to kill him. So Gloin is going to exhaust to kill off the snake. Snake is dead, but the goblin, the goblin follower is still in play, which is mediocre. Okie doke. So that's the end of that. Um, so we unexhaust everything. All my followers, or all my allies. I'm sorry you got hurt, Aragorn. You're the hero of this deck. You're the hero of the books. Okay, um, and then I raise my threat by one. And then we are going to draw a card. Cool. So yeah, if you guys have any questions about the game or anything, feel free to ask too. But let's see. I have way too much resources. Blam. I keep drawing all my low-cost cards. But uh, let's see if we can, like, end this. Because if I defeat that stage, I win the game. Oh. And we're going to play Kenai Took. He costs... Two, so we're gonna exhaust Steward of Gondor to pay that. So two resources go into Aragorn's pool, and we'll just get rid of the two resources from Aragorn's pool. And then we're gonna go into questing. We're gonna just we're gonna we're gonna quest. We're gonna quest like you've never quested before. But we still need to kill that guy. Okay. Quest, 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 give him a resource, unexhaust him. So that's one, two, three. Oh, when he came into play, I was supposed to look at the top card of my deck, and I can put it back in my hand and discard it, which might not be a bad idea, because I don't really need another one of those guys. Um, so I am at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 questing. And then that's going to be it. And we'll exhaust Faramir if need be. We've got a bunch of attack up, so we should be able to take care of this jerk. Alright, so we're going to reveal our card here. Which which is a goblin sneak. He adds two threat to the thing out here. Forced, after goblin sneak engages a player, discard the top card of the encounter deck. If it is a treachery card, goblin sneak engages the next player, if able. Weird. I guess he sneak attacks somebody. He's just going to engage me. Because I'm the only player. Um, so he has two threat. And I have seven. How hard is he going to be to beat? Not that hard. I'm not really worried about him. 
I'm worried about winning the game. So we got seven. So we're gonna. Should we do this? Yes. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Yes. So we're gonna exhaust Faramir to give us plus one, two, three, four, five questing. So that is twelve. And then um So we're at 12 minus 2, so we're currently up to 10. I'm going to uh, spend 1 to play this card as well. Spin off of Aragorn. Um, I can discard a... Uh, I'm not going to do that yet. Yeah, I am. That's fine. I can discard a leadership ally. Wait, that doesn't really help. I'm going to save that. I'm going to save it. Because it would take away from what I was trying to do. So I'm going to save it. I'll do that if it'll help win me the game. So I add 10 to this, which is awesome. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All the quests. Now I just gotta figure out how to fight these things off. Yeah, I guess I have to... I have to do this and discard the top card regardless. Which it's just another Goblin Sneak. I actually would have liked that guy to stay on top, because that was actually pretty good. Oh well. Well actually he would have come out into play which would have been good. Okay. I've been getting pretty lucky on the, the shadow effects for the most part except for that first one. Um, so we gotta figure out how to beat these guys. So this guy's coming in with three attacks strong. This guy's coming in with one attack. So let's deal with both shadow cards. Shadow cards! And we're gonna be um, eight six to beat that guy. One two three. I can chump block here, and then can I kill both of them? No. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to defend... I'm going to defend this guy with Aragorn. And this guy... I'm going to let go through unblocked. Risky, risky... So uh, this guy's being defended with Aragorn. No shadow effects. So he takes one... Aragorn takes one damage. Ouch! And then Goblin Sneak is going through undefended. He'll deal one attack. Um, and then no shadow effect either. I've gotten lucky and not hitting the treacheries, which is kind of cool. Um, cause a lot of times I can screw you over hard. So this guy deals one damage to one of my, my heroes, and I will deal it to Theodrid. Yes, I am playing solo. So uh, this game you can play solo, and it's actually pretty fun. Um, but yeah, normally we stream on Fridays, and I have, like, a ton of people here. You can check out my VODs if you want to, like, see some of that stuff. But, uh, make sure to follow, and we play all sorts of crazy stuff, like, everything. So, all these games. I have a couple games back here. Yeah, we definitely, I'm playing this solo currently, just because, uh... I was watching a video on how to do good on Twitch, and they said uh, stream more. So I don't always have tons of friends over here because I'm trying to do the streaming board game thing. So I, uh, I decided I'd play a solo game. So uh, if people wanted to, or were interested in Lord of the Rings, they could check it out. I like it. I like it a lot solo. It's probably 
It's probably the best solo game that I've played just because you can deck build and you can do all sorts of different stuff and there's tons of scenarios so it's like never the same. Like I've never played this scenario before. So it's pretty cool. Ah, oh, thanks man. Thanks for checking out the other streams. Um, yeah. So I did my damage to my guys so now I gotta attack back. And we're just going to be wrecking this guy. We're wrecking that guy. That guy's getting wrecked. I exhaust all these people. Their attack is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to his uh, 2 defense and 4 life. He is dead. He takes 5 damage, which is one more than he needs to die. But now, I have to unexhaust everyone for the end of the turn. I'm hoping we can finish this out real quick right here. And hopefully, man, I'm not even going to get anything cool to play. I don't care. I'll play another key knife joke. That's fine. My threat goes up by one. Um, start of the turn, I draw a card. Key knife took. Um, I get one resource on each of my people that I have nothing to spend it on. I'm rich. I'll play key knife took. To go with my other Kenai Took so I can Kenai Took with my Kenai Took when I... Yeah, you know. He's good for questing. And he's cheap. We're going to pay one off of each of these guys to pay for that. I'm not even going to exhaust Steward of Gondor because, you know, maybe it'll be useful later because I don't need the resources right now. Alright, so questing. We're once again just going to quest like crazy. All the Kenai Tooks go in and Guard of the Citadel. So that's going to be something to the tune of four. Questing. So four, and we're going to do these guys again. Four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven questing. Seven questing is all I need to win. And then if I go with Faramir, it'll just be ridiculous. And if I go with the card in my hand, it will also be ridiculous. So I think we got questing on lock. So Thandred's going to, once again, give his resource to Aragorn. Aragorn's going to spend it to unexhaust. So Aragorn can join in any fights that we have to have besides the Goblin Sneak. All right, so we're going to look at the uh, the card here that comes out. Oh, no, it's the first treachery. When revealed, the first player makes a locate test. If the test fails, deal two damage to all characters and trigger all lost effects in play. That is quite terrifying. So, I'm being quiet right now because if that card triggers, it kills this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy, and this guy. Um, yeah, so I'll only have two heroes in play. It basically just board wipes my entire board. So I can do a locate test. So I can discard this one card in my hand to uh, hope that the top card of this deck has a pass on it. Like I was, I was winning the game. I am no longer really doing that if I fail this. Like, it's really bad. Because I basically played out everything I have. I should have exhausted Faramir already because I should have been, if I exhausted Faramir before I revealed that, I could have given these two guys at least one more quest, which would be five altogether. I'd only be two away from winning, so I'd really only have to survive one more to be able to win. Okay, we're discarding this card to see if we can do a locate test and pass this. Well, I mean, I mean, do it live dangerously? Like, I don't have a choice. Like, I'm just screwed. 
Like, I don't I don't know what else to do. So I'm discarding that card to see if there's a pass on this. If there's a pass on this, I, I win the game. If there's a fail on this, it it's going to make it a lot harder to win the game because I'm only going to have two characters left. So here we go! It's so tense! I don't even want to look at it. Can you guys look at it? You guys, can you guys see it? Will you tell me if it has a pass effect? I don't want to... Does it have a pass effect on it? I don't want to know, man. I don't want to know. Okay, I'm going to look at it. Pass! Pass! Ah! I was so excited I broke the stream. I was so excited I broke the stream. Could you guys actually see the pass on there? I have my eyes closed. I couldn't even see if I was pointing the card at the camera. That's a pass. So, uh, so yeah. The first player makes a locate test. If the test fails, deal two damage to all characters and trigger all lost effects. There are no lost effects in play, but it would have dealt two damage to everything I had. Everything would have been dead. Everything's not dead. Everything's not dead. Like, that's why this game is fun, because it was that close to just me being screwed hard after doing pretty daggone good the whole game. It almost board wiped my entire everything. And I mean, I was tapped out. I had no cards in hand. So, uh, so yeah. So that goes away. Um, and I'll go ahead and exhaust Faraby here, which will add one, two, three, four, five, six to the quest. So we're looking at 13. So we add 13 to that. And I already have 10 on there. So that more than beats that, which lets us win the game. Yeah, that was actually pretty fun. Like, that was really scary. <coughs> I can't believe that was actually a pass, because I didn't think it was going to be, because only the cards that come in this have those pass and fails on it, and like that's like what? Maybe 30 cards out of 60, so you have a like probably less than a 33.333% chance of it actually happening. So I was more likely not to pass than I was to pass. So that was actually pretty awesome. So that'll be the entire game. This has been uh, Lord of the Rings, the uh, collectible LCG game thing. It's pretty fun. The base set's pretty fun. And... Uh,